I've already read in the accounts of Indian journalists, there have even been books on the Gujarat riots, which have been completely uh, far more detailed about all of this. As I understand it, and I have to start off by confessing I haven't seen the documentary, as I understand it, uh, basically a couple of dip diplomats went from the British High Commission in 2002 to investigate what happened in Gujarat, and they sent a report back to their own government. And that report, which was confidential or classified, has now fallen into the hands of the, BJP, of the BBC 20 years later, and that's the story that they have announced. Now, <clears throat> to my mind, that makes uh, sense for the BBC to do to a BBC audience, in England particularly. But I'm not quite sure why it's such big news for us. For us, these are issues that have been raised in our country already. Mm -hmm. uh, for many people, what happened in Gujarat is a wound that will not heal for a long time. But as far as the legal aspects are concerned, the Supreme Court has essentially laid the matter to rest by coming up with its final judgment on the matter. Now, I wonder whether we are gaining anything by discussing this in such great length. And, uh, what, the, what the BJP's or the government's rather thin-skinned reaction has achieved is to give far more attention to a documentary that in the normal course, a very small fraction of the Indian viewing public would have found the time to see. So, so you don't buy Shashi Tharoor either the colonial mindset argument or maybe the other argument the government is making that this is propaganda aimed to malign the prime minister's image and that of India in general? Look, no, I mean, I, I think that, you know, every country has a legitimate interest in making its own decisions as to what is newsworthy in that country. Mm -hmm. And so if, if the BBC deemed that there was going to be sufficient audience interest in the BBC audience to watch this. That's a news judgment. Just as if you decide tomorrow, Rajdeep, that your India Today audience would be interested in, doc in a documentary on, let's say, the Leicester riots in England, you're fully justified in doing that. There were riots in Leicester. Uh, we sent diplomats to check out what had happened, just as uh, the British uh, did in Gujarat. Uh, uh, we have even, the High Commission in London has even issued a statement, the Indian High Commission, about what happened in, in Leicester. Uh, these are not unprecedented actions for governments and diplomats to do. Now, if the Indian media didn't have cameras, they didn't find it worthwhile doing a full story on Leicester, that's the Indian media's news judgment. And if the BBC found the story worth reporting, that's the BBC's news judgment. Uh, I don't see this as part of a particularly colonial project. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, if they, did a, if they did a news story saying that Indians are not competent to govern themselves and they're busy killing each other in riots or something, then we could object to colonial mindset. There seems to be nothing, again, qualifying with the fact that I haven't seen it, from what I've heard by those who have seen it, there seems to be nothing of that sort of nature. In fact, I understand that the BBC acknowledges in their documentary that the Supreme Court has ruled otherwise and has not, or rather has exonerated some of the people whom the, uh, the documentary appears to him. But, what, but, you know, let, let's look at those visuals that we've been playing, uh, Dr. Tharoor, uh, this evening. What do you see, how do you respond to what is what we are seeing happening in campuses like JNU, uh, like in Jamia, where police has entered, electricity yesterday in JNU was cut off to prevent the screening of the documentary by the students. In Kerala, uh, co youth congress groups are going ahead and showing the documentary as are left groups. Are we seeing in a way because of the manner in which some universities and the state is reacting, a creeping authoritarianism being normalized, does that worry you at all? Police entering campus to stop the film? I'm afraid so. And I think that the JNU authorities have disgraced themselves by doing what they did. And in fact, I'm proud that it was ineffectual because the kids watched it on battery-powered laptops anyway, so that the cutting off of the electricity um, only prevented those who were hoping to watch it in their rooms, but those who came to the uh, public location on campus uh, simply watched it on their laptops instead, is what I understand. So good for these kids. And certainly in Kerala, uh, the government did no such thing. And, and both the Congress, Youth Congress and the communist equivalent, the DYFI, did the same thing. They conducted uh, public screenings on large screens. <coughs> and some people watched them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is essentially a protest against heavy-handed censorship. It is not necessarily um, an endorsement of British colonialism, as some people on the on the BJP side would like to suggest. Mm -hmm. I think they must appreciate 
that uh, they have actually attracted more attention to their leaders' misbehavior in 2002 mm -hmm. than they would otherwise have had to endure if they had just taken a more mature attitude to this documentary. But there will be those, uh, Dr. Tharoor, who say the Congress has no moral right to talk about censorship. This was the same BBC that was chased away by Indira Gandhi in the 1970s. This was the party that imposed emergency. And uh, the BJP will in any case say, look, we've been winning every election in Gujarat and in the last few elections nationally. So forget about Gujarat. It's a closed chapter. So look, first of all, what about her is a rather specious form of argument. Um, the fact that uh, one party did something uh, that has been widely discredited does not mean, does not justify another party when they're in power equally doing something that will be widely discredited even while they're doing it and certainly by future future journalists and historians. So I don't think that this kind of what about tree serves any useful purpose, number one. Number two, speaking for myself, I'm not a Congress spokesman. I was not pretending to speak for the Congress party. I was speaking for myself. And on the very issues that you've just mentioned, my stand at the time and in my subsequent writings was critical of all those events. And therefore, I certainly have nothing to apologize for. I have never defended censorship, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, conducted by my party or by anybody else. I just don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I also think it's productive. Uh, uh, you know, but, but wearing your, you don't think it's a good idea, but wearing your diplomat's hat, do you think in a year when India holds G20 presidency, that censorship will hurt India's image, that this attempt to ban the screening will hurt India's image, particularly in world capitals. Yeah, this has been extremely unfortunate for the image of India internationally, starting with the UK, obviously, but also because others will report what has happened in their media, uh, also across the democratic world. Uh, the fact may be that government agencies value the professional governmental relationship with India to an extent that they would perhaps try and dismiss this controversy. But I'm afraid public opinion in these countries will see the Indian government as having censored a documentary and therefore will assume there was culpability, as suggested in the documentary, will pay more heed to the negative analysis uh, uh, of the Indian government's stand and position. And in all, uh, it will basically be a net negative for the government of India. I had suggested uh, in an earlier interview to someone else uh, that the best reaction would actually have been to um, to to dismiss it, saying that everyone's entitled to their views. But as far as we are concerned, we are not paying attention to this documentary very much. Next question or words along words to that effect, mm -hmm. because that would have at least uh, by being dismissive, uh, taken the government out of the firing line by reacting in the manner they did very thin skinned way by then going so far as to have it removed, having links removed from Twitter and other social media, by having uh, specific tweets by Indians who had retweeted these links deleted, and then actually banning the film and censoring attempts to screen it, they have actually cast doubt on their commitment to the values of our constitution and to their own claims that they are the quote unquote mother of democracy. Uh, this is a phrase that Mr. Modi has used internationally. The mother of democracy does not stifle one of her own children, namely freedom of speech. So I think this was uh, uh, an own goal in many ways that the government has inflicted upon itself. And uh, as an Indian, I, I do regret that they have done this. As uh, somebody on the opposite side of the political fence, I might want to relish the uh, discomfiture that they are facing internationally. But as an Indian, I do wish they hadn't put themselves in such a position because I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see India respected. Let okay. me add one more thought, Rajdeep, which is that I thought that the reasons given by the government for the banning were particularly unfortunate. To say that this documentary threatens India's sovereignty and that screening it would affect India's national security and public order was a frankly pathetic excuse. Our sovereignty is not so fragile that it can be threatened by a documentary being shown in a foreign country, nor is it, nor is our national security so weak mm -hmm. that it is threatened by a BBC film. I, I just think using these arguments was unworthy of a mighty uh, country like India with all its strength, its institutions, its mm -hmm. armies, its, 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 its capacity mm -hmm. to st stand up for itself. 
And I hope that the people in the government who have been using these arguments will think hard about what they're conveying about India. They should be saying that uh, we are not bothered about this. We are a sovereign state. No one can threaten our sovereignty, least of all a public sector broadcaster in a foreign country. That would have been a far more mature step than the one. Shashi Tharoor, for giving us your perspective in such detail uh, and appreciate the manner in which uh, you've spoken out here on this issue without necessarily getting into a polarized argument, but giving us a more wholesome perspective on why censorship of any form is perhaps the wrong way of approaching this. I appreciate your joining us. Now, remember, yesterday we saw the scenes that took place in JNU. The film was to be screened last night there and uh, the administration decided at the last moment to shut off electricity to, uh, uh, to prevent the students from watching it. Some of them watched it then on their mobiles and it ended up in a bit of a conflict between left and right, between the uh, left unions of JNU and between the Akhil Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad of the BJP. What does that mean? Should this, these uh, films be shown on campuses? Should the administration step in and prevent these films from being shown? Can these films at all be prevented in this age of the net? These are some of the questions I want to raise now. Aishi Ghosh is president of JNUSU and Akshit Dhaya is Delhi State Secretary of the ABVP and president of DUSU. I appreciate you joining us first, Akshit, on the show. Why is it that the ABVP took out, you know, the, uh, the left unions are saying ABVP even threw stones at us. Tell us from your perspective, why did the ABVP oppose the film being screened by the student? The film is not banned in India. Surely the st student who wants to see it can. Those who don't, just switch it off. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Raji, Rajdeep Ji and the India Today group for inviting me for this show. And we'll also like to congratulate in advance the citizens of the entire country on 74th Republic Day of our nation. Mm -hmm. uh, beginning with the issue that you bring in, uh, Rajit, Rajdeep Ji, the issue that has been taken up by the left targeting ABVP, it's baseless, first thing, because there was no ABVP activist involved in any kind of the uh, issues that has been took up by the uh, our left uh, 